Hey guys, Dr. Shook here. So I've been um, I've been just hanging out this morning. I've been uh, recording some videos for you guys. These are going to be actually part of my coffee with the, the doc because it's really what I'm doing. I'm sitting here drinking a little bit of coffee. I've had had some breakfast. I'm going to exercise here in a minute. Probably use the sauna this morning. Um, but I like to get some thoughts and and share some things that I've been thinking about with you guys. I come across people that I see uh, in practice and these things that I find myself repeating to people a lot and these concepts, I really like to teach them to people and that's how I, why I'm trying to put it here on video. But um, today what I want to talk about is anemia and how anemia, which is a decreased ability to carry oxygen throughout the body, is a deal breaker. Now what I mean by that is if you're anemic, you cannot support someone nutritionally and help them to recover from a chronic disease process or help their autoimmunity or their thyroid function if you cannot address and affix or improve that anemia. Because anemia just means you don't have enough oxygen. And if you don't, and I say just, I mean, it's a major issue, right? Uh, if, you, if you don't have enough oxygen, if you can't carry oxygen, and your red blood cells do that, they carry the oxygen through the bloodstream, they deliver it to the tissues and the cells where it's needed, and you will have dysfunction at the level of the red blood cell. The red blood cell can't make energy, it can't produce hormones, it can't, it can't uh, rebuild, it can't repair, it can't function normally. So oxygen is critical for the cells, every single cell in your body to function. Just like blood sugar is, just like thyroid hormone, hormone is. So if you're, if you're anemic, you, you just can't help people get better. It's just, it's, it's, it's a futile battle. So you have to address the anemia and figure out why the anemia is there. And there's lots of different types of anemia. So there's uh, there are B vitamin anemias where people can't utilize B vitamins properly and the cells get really big. The, the red blood cells get bigger in size. There are iron deficiency anemias where the cells get really small. And I want to say something about this. You know, some people are like, I'm anemic so I take iron. Well, wait a minute. Pump the brakes there because there's a lot of different types of anemia. And the number one thing that I want you to know about iron is, yes, you have to have it, but you need to know, do you have an iron deficiency anemia? And if you, and, and if, even if you do have an iron deficiency anemia, people, I see people take iron. They're just like, they, they come back, they're anemic, and their doctors literally just say, you need to take iron. And they're, it's, they're, and I've seen this plenty of times where the anemia has not been determine the type of anemia and there's a general recommendation to take iron and so let me tell you something high levels of iron in the body are more toxic than lead and mercury you do not want to be you do not want to have high levels of iron in the body for a prolonged period of time at, at all it is extremely inflammatory it's extremely toxic you you have to be careful supplementing with iron you um if you take iron you need to have your your levels checked regularly to see what's happening because you need to figure out why you're not utilizing iron why you're losing it you know what's happening you know if it's a if it's a if it's a woman that has a heavy menstrual cycle then why are you bleeding that heavily if um, you know if you don't if you're not absorbing it then why are you not absorbing it you know is there a problem with your stomach acidity you're not breaking it down are you not consuming enough in the diet there's there's a lot of potential reasons but but anyway, iron can be extremely toxic, and anemia is a deal breaker. There's lots of different types of anemia. Anemia has to be taken seriously. You will you will feel terrible and have major dysfunction with throughout your body if you're anemic. So it's something that you got to work on. Um, it's why I look at anemia all the time. I mean, people ask me, you know, they, they they come in and they're like, hey, I've got thyroid problems, right? And they're convinced they have thyroid problems, yet. Yet, when I look at their labs, their thyroid looks pretty good. But guess what we find? There's anemia or there's blood sugar dysregulation. And so when you have these other problems, they can mimic hypothyroidism. So is it your thyroid? Are you sure? Are you positive? I mean, a lot of times you can have multiple things happening at once. And that's just a fact. I mean, that is, that's, you know, here's the thing. The exception is that someone comes in and they have one problem. And I've never really seen that ever happen. The rule is that people are going to come in with a lot of problems, right? There's going to be a lot of issues at one time that you have to look at and say, well, okay, how can we try to improve this person's health by making as few changes as possible and impacting multiple systems at once? So that's why you try to look upstream at the most foundational chemistry first, like do they have inflammation? Do they have, are they autoimmune? 
Do, are they anemic? Do they have blood sugar dysregulation? Do they have optimal thyroid hormone physiology? And you try to work, you try to look at this and survey all these problems and say, okay, this is the mix of issues. Here's their clinical history. Here are their labs. Do they make sense? Can we help them? Do we think we can help them? You know, you don't, you don't know. You don't know for sure. Everyone's different. And, and I try not to make any assumptions anymore. Here's one thing I don't know. Here's, here's one thing I can tell anyone. I don't know if I can help you until I help you. Until you get better, I don't know. I don't know. Even if I think I can help you. Um, I think, you know, you just have to be really upfront with people. You, everyone's different. Everyone, people have different issues and things going on. And even if we take the most extensive health history, which we have very extensive health histories, we do very expanded blood work, you, you cannot identify everything based on that. You, you just can't do it. And, and there's a lot of other factors that come into play. But the, the main thing to do is really, I think, is to try to look at everything that you can at once and then try to help people implement plans that are doable, that are implement that they can actually implement. Take some work, but that they can implement, that can impact multiple systems at once, that can improve things like anemia, that that you know really you can work on a lot of these systems. But I wanted to really my, my main point here was anemia is a big issue. It's a big problem for so many people. So we have to work on fixing anemia. And if we don't fix anemia, man, I just have I can't get people better, and I don't really know anyone that can get you better if you're anemic. I mean, if every if, if every cell in your body, from brain to gland to every single cell, requires oxygen, and you're you're anemic, and you, which means you you can't deliver oxygen efficiently, and every cell can dysfunction, right? Then, what are the symptoms of that? I mean, literally, you know, the most common thing you see with anemia is fatigue, right? Because they can't produce energy, so they get very very fatigued. But literally every single cell in your body can dysfunction. So could that be a, a brain problem? Could that be a could that be a problem with your hormones? Yeah. Every every gland in your body is made of cells that require oxygen so that they can work to produce hormones. Could I mean you name it? Could that be a, what kind of issue? Just name it. Like a problem with the body. Could any anemia cause it? Yeah. I mean if, if there's dysfunction, if your problem is dysfunction of a of a tissue or or system and you're anemic, and you have decreased oxygen oxygen delivery, that system could suffer. So anyway, I just want to share that with you guys because it's really important you understand anemia. It's really important that you understand that, like the perspective that I take with healthcare, and that I think is is a is a very good way to approach it, is that you want to try to not just look at one problem or one sy symptom. You want to try to evaluate people as a whole and say, what is going on with this person? You know as much as I can see at one time and how can I try to impact multiple things because what ends up happening is in this current model of healthcare that we have we miss we miss a lot of other issues that are happening and it is in some ways it's designed I mean there's a lot of problems with it I just disagree with it as a whole I think a lot of people are finding that it's an issue that We've got to we've got to make some changes and we've got to reform our healthcare system so that we can look at people differently. We can be more truly preventative with them. We can give people what they want, which is really to be healthy and enjoy their life and 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 spend time with their friends and their family and work and be productive and 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 explore their dreams and do the things that they that they want to do. That's really what our healthcare needs to be set up on: optimizing those those opportunities and experiences, not on just minimizing cost. For the sake of, um, well, well, who knows? That's the that's what's said. We we only order certain tests. Like this is this is what it said in healthcare today, is that certain testing is you know, testing is is minimized due to the fact that it's so that so there's there's not overutilization, so that there's not um, overbilling to save costs to reduce fraud, all these things. Which that all sounds good, and I agree with all those things. But the fact is, is that there's so many people suffering under this current model. It's not working. <laughs> you can't medicate a sick, chronically sick person like this back to optimal health. It takes nutrition. It takes a lot of other aspects. We got to work together to do this, right? Everything that we do in healthcare is awesome, but there needs to be an emphasis on prevention and improving health. Like take someone that's diabetic. My God, look at these people that are diabetic. It, they, from beginning to end of their health care, can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars because of all of the stuff that, that these people go through. I mean, they can, they, it can affect their eyesight. It can affect their, 
you know, they can have amputations and neuropathies, and it's just horrible. It's horrible. And you, you could take that same person, spend a few thousand dollars working them up very thoroughly, and if and even and even this and even buy their food right so so I get your arguments well it's expensive to do the things that you say because it, it costs money no it's not no it's not the, the you know what I think my first my first real patient that I worked with she went she was you know she went to a food pantry and got food to implement the the, the teachings that I gave her the, the diet that I gave her I don't so when people tell me there's no money to do this I, I'm just going to tell you that I worked with people that were destitute, that had absolutely nothing. And yeah, I donated my time, but she didn't, she, the diet, which is the, which is the heart of everything is changing diet is the first place to start. Went to a food pantry, you know, bought non-organic vegetables, ate from the, the dirty dozen clean 15 list, did things to, to make changes in her life because it was important to her. You know what? I, I hear a lot of excuses, and I'm just going to say, listen, there are ways to do it. There are ways to do it, right? There are ways to do it. Food pantry, free. I'm going to tell you, went to went to food pantry and got a lot of things to help them. So um, in our healthcare system, you know, I would say even with like diabetics, you know, back to my point, even if we did all this testing, determined what was driving their processes as much as possible, gave them nutritional supplementation, bought their food for a solid year. Let's say we're at, let's just be outrageous in cost and say we're at $25,000 for all that, right? $25,000. Bought their food, bought all the nutritional supplementation, gave, did all the testing that we thought we needed, paid the doctors $25,000, right? $25,000. We, we rehabilitate that person. How much money, if that person is no longer type 2 diabetic, let's say it's type 2 diabetes, no longer diabetic. They have now had, and let's say they even have health coaches that touch base with them every two weeks or something, right? Guide them along, regular routine follow-ups. This is, let's say it's a $25,000 process. How much money could we save our healthcare system? Tremendous amounts. Tremendous, unbelievable amounts because you're not doing procedures, medications, you're not seeing all these doctors, you're not doing all this other crap. And quite frankly, it's I think it's, we have got to change our system. It is, it is, it is broken. It is, it it needs to be integrated with some other approaches. And people want other approaches. People are tired of being loaded on medications all the time. That they just know that they can, they can, they don't need to be on all those. And you know, I'm not saying that you don't need medications. I think medications. I am not anti-medicine one bit. I actually am very thankful for what we have in our healthcare system. Um, everyone in healthcare, everyone, and I think even people, you know, think the pharmaceutical companies are big and bad. I don't think they are. I, I don't. I mean, there's no one, no one that wants that I think is is trying to do something to harm or be malicious at all. It's a system that has evolved without the knowledge of a lot of the stuff that I'm teaching you guys on on like functional medicine and looking at the drivers and 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 roots of disease processes. This movement and this understanding of functional medicine is pretty new um, as, a, as a whole. It's, it's, you know, there's this natural healthcare approach and really this util utilization of literature and really making this thing, bringing this to the forefront more is something that's happening, you know, now as we talk about it. So uh, anyway, there's a lot of changes that need to happen. Of course, I have gone on way too long <laughs> again, but my main, my main point with you guys is, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta really, you've got to be your own advocate, and so that's why I'm trying to teach you guys as much as I possibly can, and get this information out there to people. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and you know learning more about your health. If you have any questions, you need anything, let us know. Remember, if you guys need help, seriously, if you need help, I work with people all over the country. I work with people um, in other countries, and we can do it via Skype, phone, or uh, we can also do it via FaceTime. We can uh, get labs done typically near you if you need advanced diagnostic testing. So some of these advanced tests that we do, we can send you test kits. It's what we do in the office. I mean, it's we can do very much the same, very similar approach uh, working with you. We just do it distance consulting versus becoming an office patient. So if you need help, let me know, and we can see if we can help you. You can go to our website at dr. 
drbradshook.com and check it out. You can also, uh, if you need, if you if you just you know you're not sure what to do, you, you might want to schedule a 15 minute consultation with me. As of right now, I'm trying to do one of those per day, and we we've got about 15 minutes where I can just talk to you about what's going on and maybe give you some ideas. I'll give you everything free that I possibly can as far as direction goes. Um, if you need antibodies checked, thyroid antibodies, we can get thyroid antibodies, TPO and TG antibodies, thyroid bind, not thyroid binding, thyroid globulin and thyroid peroxidase antibodies. So these are the ones typically associated with Hashimoto's for twenty bucks, twenty dollars. Through at, at, you just go to a lab core. Those tests can be range anywhere from four hundred to eight hundred dollars through an insurance company. Don't ask me why. We get them at a cash rate like we do um, all of our labs, and they're significantly less. So there's a lot of different things. If you want to know where to get started with like looking at your thyroid hormone markers or thyroid labs, I would start with our guidebook. I created a guidebook called The Nine Tests Required to Understand Your Thyroid. Thyroid, just you can get that book if you want it. Just let us know. We'll post a link, and you can go and you can you can uh, pick it up. We charge seven dollars for the guidebook. We have a whole website and um, uh, all this stuff that we have online. We have to pay for a lot of it, so we just ask like help us cover our technology fees on some of the things that we have, like some of these guidebooks I've created. I put a lot of time into them, and I just ask just help us cover our technology fees for it. Um, so we just charge a small amount. It's not like we're making a lot of money on this stuff or anything. It's just something that helps us cover our fees. So there is a small fee for it, but um, I think it's a tremendous value. If you break out your labs, and you can see like what your labs are, and it can give you some guidance on some of the things that could be happening. Uh, and you may maybe you don't know the labs that you need, and that can give you a better insight into that as well. So anyway, appreciate you guys. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and um, look for some more videos and live streams from me coming up soon. So I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.